Hello, this is Professor Langdana at Rutgers Business School. I'm a professor here in the Finance and Economics Department, and I'm also the director of the Rutgers Executive MBA program known as The Powerhouse. So welcome to The Powerhouse. Today we're going to talk about inflation and how we can decide if inflation is indeed coming and what we can do about it. Can we look into the future? Is there a macroeconomic indicator that lets us look into the future, forward looking? So that's what I'm going to talk about. Uh, we'll discuss something called the Fisher Effect. Most of you watching me here and listening to this have probably done macroeconomics before. Certainly all my students have, so I'm hoping you can all power up while I revisit some of these old discussions or new discussions for some of you. So one important thing to notice and understand is that most of the major macroeconomic statistics are backward looking. You know, so GDP, that's national output of course, unemployment, consumer confidence, jobless claims, exchange rates, disposable income, those are all last month's numbers. Uh, first time um, unemployment benefits, you know, last week's numbers, last quarter's numbers, last year's numbers. So most of the major macro statistics really are statistics that we get by looking in the rear view mirror. They're telling us where we've come from. There are one, there's really one good one that looks forward in time and that statistic is long-term interest rates, especially long-term interest rates pertaining to U.S. Treasury bonds. So let me just uh, do this on a very intuitive level today. Let's not get bogged down with technical details. Let's just go straight with intuition. So here it is. How are long-term interest rates forward-looking? And how could they tell us if inflation's coming? So let's say I am a lender and I have $10,000 to lend, and you want to borrow $10,000 for three years. And I've decided that when I lend you money for three years, 10,000 bucks, when you pay me back, I want to be 5% better off in terms of real purchasing power. In other words, when you pay me back, I want to be really better off by 5%, to be able to buy 5% more stuff. That's the real interest rate. It's a non-technical definition. However, in the, I'm doing my macroeconomic analysis and I'm looking ahead next three years and I'm doing all my you know, exchange rates and global capital and political situation and everything. And I happen to believe that inflation is going to be 10%. Just, just for assumption, it's not actually a real case right now. It's just a nice round number. So inflation 10%, which means that when you pay me back that money is going to be worth 10% less because as we all know, inflation eats into the purchasing power of money. So if I just gave you 10,000 bucks and you paid me back in three years, you know, no interest rate, just plain gave me back, I would be 10% down because the inflation during the interim period would eat into the loan. So how much should I lend you at? Well, I better make sure I add 10% in there. That's just going to get me up from negative to zero right because 10 percent was inflation which ate away my money and then i have to add five percent which is the real interest rate that i really want that's a, that's the interest rate that's going to make me five percent better off that was five percent and so i'll lend you at fifteen percent five percent was the real rate and ten percent was the inflation the expected inflation all right that is known as the fisher effect and it's one of the most important things we do in macroeconomics in the executive MBA program, the Fisher Effect. Where in this case, we have the Fisher Effect right here, where ILT, that's long-term interest rates, R is the real interest rate, and pi is the expected, please note, it's the expected future inflation and risk outlook. You're looking forward into time. And so in this discussion we had, this baby was 5%. This expected inflation over the three years was 10%. And so the long-term interest rates are 15%. 
And this is the Fisher effect, named after Irving Fisher. And please note, the first takeaway here is that long-term interest rates are forward-looking. I like to call them macroeconomic radars because radar looks over the horizon. And a shout out to my dad, who was a radar engineer. But there was a student in my Beijing class, actually from the US Embassy, who said, Professor, they're more like macroeconomic oracles looking into the future. So I think that's actually better. So forward and long-term interest rates, forward-looking. They have this component here that's looking into the future, that's telling you if inflation's coming, or risk is coming, and that is extremely important. Now let me just show you something called the yield curve here. This is the treasury yield curve. We've just discussed the Fisher effect. This is time to maturity. And so all of you folks who are in the mortgage market, who are thinking of locking in your mortgages, this is gonna be particularly important for you. And this is ILT. These are the nominal long-term interest rates. And here we are. This is time to maturity. This is government debt. So treasury bills, treasury bonds. This is the, this is the borrowing Uncle Sam does. And in my opinion, it's the safest investment on the planet still and hopefully will always be. And here we have 30 days, very short term. Then one year, um, five years, and finally 10 years, and finally 30 years. Right? And generally, the yield curve looks something like this. It's a nice exaggerated view here. Looks like this, it's upward sloping. And then tuition here, this is the yield curve. Okay, so here we go, yield curve. There's an animated one on the internet, you can look it up. And so basically, interest rates for 30 days, lower. Uh, one year, a little higher, you can see there. Five years, a little higher, and that makes sense because looking at the equation I just gave you, the more the duration of the loan, the more the uncertainty. If I was just lending you for 30 days, well, I would know pretty much what the inflation would be over the 30 days or the risk, as opposed to 10 years where it's much more uncertainty. So it's upward sloping, interest rates usually higher uh, when the duration of the loan is higher, upward sloping. The point here is that let's say this was four weeks ago. And let's say that you're looking at the yield curve and you see something like this. And this is last week. And let's say this is yesterday. If you see this, then all the red lights have come on. The long end of the yield curve, that's what that is. Anything over five years usually is the long end. When the long end of the yield curve rises, the bond market is telling you inflation is coming. That expected inflation, the pi E, is going up. Some lenders today are looking ahead and they are seeing something coming up in the future that's spooking them, that's adding this inflation premium and this is why people who really fixate on the bond market, they're known as bond vigilantes, you know? So Ben Bernanke, Alan Greenspan, all the old Fed chairpersons, they were bond vigilantes. The long end twitched and they would lie awake at night. In fact, there was this famous comedian, he's still around, James Carville, was a husband and wife team, and James Carville famously said that if he died and if he was given a chance to come back to planet Earth, and if he was given a choice as to what he could be, he would be the bond market because he could intimidate everyone. So uh, I thought that was pretty clever. So the long end going up, and so what does that mean? It means inflation is coming. Is that good or bad? Well, if the economy is just recovering, then there is inflation. You know, when there's a stage two, it's called stage two growth, it's coming out of a recession, there is some inflation, wages go up, commodity pressure, um, there's demand from government, demand from businesses. That's a good thing. However, that's the only good example. If the economy is growing too fast, well, then it's overheating. When you're running out of high-skilled labor, running out of commodities, um, you're getting bubbles forming, that means the Fed's going to hit the brakes, 
push up short term interest rates, short term interest rates that is, and bring this train to a halt. That's called overheating. So the only good inflation scenario is when you are just starting to grow from a recession. Um, too much growth, too fast, the train's going off the tracks, it's overheating. The other case, which we'll talk about in the next blog, is worries about inflation due to non-sustainable deficits. When the rest of the world and US residents stop lending to Uncle Sam, when Uncle Sam's deficits start getting out of control, that's like 5% of GDP or 6% of GDP, Uncle Sam has to print money like crazy. It's called monetizing the debt. And that makes that long end go up too. Not a good scenario, very dangerous. And I have to tell you, if the Trump tax cuts misfire, if the Trump tax cuts do not result in companies hiring tons of more workers and expanding the tax base, or the billionaires out there with their big tax cuts increasing the demand for workers, if that does not happen, then you're gonna have tax cuts without the size of the pie growing, without the tax base growing, and the deficits are gonna be non-sustainable. And that baby, the long end, will be rising fast. So, if you see this happening, and if you're in the mortgage market, lock that baby in. The sooner the better. If you are a person, you're a fan of CDs, certificates of deposit, well, you'll be happy. Lenders will be happy. Savers will be happy. Borrowers are going to lie awake at night. So the bond market, macroeconomic radar, or macroeconomic oracle, and there you have it, a short discussion. So thank you for visiting the powerhouse at Rutgers. And I'll see you next time when I move into deficits, non-sustainable deficits. And we will be tying that to this scenario of the long end of the bond market or the yield curve rising. Thank you again for visiting. And you have my email address. Uh, you have my blog um, URL out there. And uh, email me anytime. And you also have information on the Rutgers Executive MBA program. So come and see us here too. Thank you again. Goodbye.